And he sent me a text after the fight saying how disappointed he was in Gagey, the way he threw his punches, there were slot, there were No, you're not seeing what created that. The greatness, the phenomena, the specialness. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure there's a lot of him that is seeing it the same way. Gee, why did he throw like this? Why did he throw like that? Why was he tired so fast? <laughs> well, because when you're in there with that unstoppable force, yeah, that's what I'm going to name it. He makes himself an unstoppable, immovable object. When you're in there with that, and that comes across to the other guy, you, you start... I'm not going to say panic. I'm not going to use that word. That's, that's f- more for the civilians uh, that, that don't have the training that a, that a gadget and these, you know, these guys have. But you run too fast. You start running too fast to try to keep this immovable force off of you. This unstoppable force off of you. You start running to you start burning up, Ken. You start you're you you you're combusting too much energy, too much fuel. You don't mean to, but it's what happens. And you're running too fast. You're working too hard. You're working at a harder rate than your body can sustain to keep because it's here too. To keep this immovable, unstoppable force from invading your soul. And, and so that's what took place. And that's why you see him tired. That's why you, you turn around on a 105 degree July day and you turn and you say, where'd the puddle go? You didn't see the waves. To your point, it's like when you're watching a fight and the trainer is telling him, throw this jab, and, and, and the commentator's like, I don't know why he's not doing that. Well, he obviously thinks that when he does that, he's getting countered, or he's convinced himself he's going to get countered. And let's not forget, the Gaethje threat. looked like the a threat. killer. You're right, the threat, the threat, the, the pressure, the, 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 the infrared rays. They're hitting you all the time. Like, like Almost like you have no say you no longer have say in what's going to happen. Of course you do. Yeah. But it's like that's been taken away from you. Yeah. And let's not forget, Gaethje looked awesome against Tony Ferguson, who's considered a super elite striker. So it's not like Gaethje became a different person in there. It was Khabib who made him into a different person and imposed his will on him, and it just forced Gaethje's whole game plan to change and went out the window. Until you're in it, until you feel that, heat you know it's kind of like you 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 think that you felt the heat of a stove until you felt the heat of a furnace (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean ken yeah yeah, and that's what i'm talking about and to you feel it for the first time you're not you don't know what it really is Mm -hmm. that's that's what i'm saying that's what this podcast today is about it ain't about khabib just being another guy no, he beat a tremendous guy. But it ain't just about that he, you know, he mounted the guy, he did this, he, his legs and all of that. Beautiful. But it's about this that his father was part of. And um, I'll finish it up by saying, I always say to you guys out there that the thing that, is always consistent, always reliable, always there, paralleled with my sport, whether it's UFC, any form of fighting, any form of overcoming, any form of dealing with fear, any form of, of, you know, resistance, of, of challenge, challenge to your being, to your existence, you know, any of that kind of threat, any of that, any of it, there's, there's always going to be a need, a need to to, 
to overcome that, to be able to deal with that. Um, but there's also going to be a component, a part of that, that is a special intelligence. How many times have you heard me say it, Ken, that, that when you're in this business, the mental part's the most important. And what these guys don't get enough credit for that I always see and try to remind people of the parallels, the top guys are smart. It separates them. Yeah, they're tough. It's a prerequisite to this business, to the fighting business. It's a prerequisite to life. I hate to remind... News memo! <laughs> You, you want to make it out there? Yeah, you go to school. Yeah, you get good marks. Yeah, but you better be tough. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, you better be tough too. You better be able to take a punch in the nose, whether it's <laughs> literally or figuratively, but you better be able to, to say, no, I'm not going away. I'm not going yeah. away. Yeah. But all of these guys consistently that separate, from just the tough guys to the ones that are smart too, under that kind of extreme environment, to be smart, to be able to think. And I, I always applaud them for that. That my, in my business, it's the guys like Salvador Sanchez who beat the great Indian Red Lopez years ago in the 80s, 70s. Well, I love Danny Red Lopez, little Red Lopez. Loved him. Great puncher, tough undefeated he fought Salvador Sanchez Sanchez destroyed him they were both tough but Sanchez was smarter so it made him tougher and you see the same things here it's not just the physical strength and the quickness but and the toughness but the ability to be smart separates them Khabib smart brilliant genius knows his technique at the end, how does he finish? His quickness. Whoop! He gets on him. He mounts him. And next thing you know, he makes a move. He's got his legs wrapped around him, like you said at the beginning, like a python around <laughs> his neck. Technique. Smart. The right move at the right time. Calmness. The whole package. Smart. So smart. Oh, he's just a tough, he's an animal. No, no, no. No, please, please, please. Don't even let that come out of your mouth not understanding what he really is. He's so much more. And the special ones are. And he and so he's got that he's got that asbestos suit that he wears that is able to hold off what he puts out that if someone pushes it back to him, he can ward it off. He can repel it. He's got that development. And he's got the ability to put those rays, those ultraviolet, infrared, whatever you want to call them. They burn you up. They debilitate you. They evaporate you. And I want to say one other thing. I always use the word, at the right times, supreme confidence. That's the definite. This guy's the definition of that, guys. I, I just want to make sure I, I said that to you, that Khabib was calm and controlled and sure, knowing what was going to happen because he wouldn't let anything else happen. Supreme confidence. That's what it means. And that's what it is. That's supreme confidence. Complete belief. The ones that Sugar Ray Robinson had, Muhammad Ali had it, the great ones have it. It's not something that everyone has. And um, in the end, yes, so strong on the mat and so quick to move and mount him. And let's not forget, also so smart, as I said, to use the proper you know moves and technique to get to him. And, and then retire. You talk about strength. But how about that inner strength of character to retire as his mom asked him to now that his dad's no longer, you know, obviously with him to help him. And finally, I want to say, this is what I was saying. I usually leave it, Ken, with the physical, physical description and analysis 
of what took place, you know, and the mental too. But this one, I want to leave it. I want to go somewhere else. I want to say that his dad did a great job, not just as a trainer, the obvious, you know, make it a great champion, which of course he is, but in the way that he taught him and instilled in him the great principles and character it takes to be a real champion and how to carry yourself as a champion. Because if you don't feel like a champion inside, well, you can't act like one on the outside. All you need to know that his father accomplished that was really to hear him talk after the fight when he applauded his opponent and gave him the great credit that he did. Again, he was humble, yet he was proud and respectful. Everything a champion in anything should be. And a credit to his father who made him. We should have more fathers and sons and people like him. So I just want to say congratulations, good luck to him in his retirement. And um, his sons, I don't know if he has children, Ken, but if he's blessed enough and he wants to have children, his sons and whatever children he will have or has, they're also going to be champions. How could they not be when they're going to be taught by such a man who lives by such principles and such teachings? How can they not be? And you know what that means? It means we'll probably have some more UFC <laughs> champs in the future, but more importantly, it'll mean that we have better human beings on this planet, and we need them. We need them even more than Dana White needs more UFC champions. Believe me, we do. 